Good evening, and welcome to the May 29th meeting of the Florissant City Council. Would you please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please call the roll. Here. Caputa. Here. Childra. Here. Hanky. Here. Pagano. Here. Parson. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Are there any corrections or additions to the meeting minutes and executive meeting minutes of May 14, 2018? Councilman Childra moves to approve the minutes, seconded by myself. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The meeting minutes are approved. The next item on the agenda is a legislative update presented by Tim Green. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, are you not on? It's not on. You need to push the bottom. Push and hold in the bottom. I need batteries that went out a little bit ago. Check. <laughs> there you go. It's working now. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, as we know, um, there really hasn't been a lot to talk about in Jefferson City lately. No pun intended. That was kind of a pun. But instead of doing the PowerPoint, I sent the PowerPoint I do every year to the mayor to share with you, but I just want to go through some of the highlights that is in that PowerPoint instead of doing the PowerPoint tonight. If you look at your first sheet, you can see basically there were over 2,068 pieces of legislation introduced. Of those, 5% basically went through the General Assembly. Uh, if you look at the next slide, there were a total of 558 Senate bills introduced and 1,510 House bills introduced, besides the resolutions and the joint resolutions. Uh, the next page um, is basically dates. June 27th is the last day the governor of Missouri can veto or sign a bill. Uh, the governor's budget, excuse me, uh, there's going to always be a governor. So um, the impeachment began at the end of session May 18th. We will soon find out what happens there. In every piece of legislation that is passed, unless there's an emergency clause that takes two-thirds of both the Missouri House and the Missouri Senate, goes into effect August 28th. Um, as I talked to several council members this past summer, there's always two pieces of legislation um, that sometimes are geared towards cities like Florissant, which you have done with the landlord tenant ordinance. And it was House Bill 1508 from Representative Cross in Kansas City and House Bill 1510. And that basically singles out some of the ordinances that you have passed in dealing with that. Those pieces of legislation um, were added. They didn't go anywhere after committee, but as I always tell you, it's all about adding amendments at the end. They were put on in a, on a Senate bill, Senate Bill 918. We were able to make sure that that Senate bill um, did not, when it came back to the Senate, was not taken up or passed. But it's really active and it's really fast. Um, not that it matters to the city council, but Senate Bill 918 was taking away local municipalities' abilities to do breed specific. So that was the bill. It was tried to tack on at the last, but that did not pass. There was basically one major municipal government bill that passed. That was Conference Committee Report 
uh, for Senate substitute, Senate committee substitute for House Bill 1291. I have attached a summary of that bill. In each of those bylines were originally a bill that was introduced. So that shows you at the end of session how many bills get tacked on into one bill. And it just shares with you all of that. If you look on the next handout, it's House Bill 1460. Mayor Schneider was very active in the um, interim committee that had both citizens. Uh, he was the representative of municipal government on the transportation. Uh, we have not had a gas tax increase since 1992. It was a six cents gas increase over uh, six years, two cents, two cents, two cents. Uh, there has been a continual effort to try to get some infrastructure funding for our roads and bridges. Uh, House Bill 1460 will go to the vote of the people in November. And what it is, is it's a 10 cent increase, two and a half cents over five, or two and a half cents over four years. Um, and it'll quit funding, uh, the last one will kick in in 2022, I believe. Uh, that was passed the last day of session. I want to show you on that bill, just as always, uh, how bills can so much can get added. The original intent of this bill was that you get income when you receive a medal for Olympics. And this was a bill passed in the House that came over to the Senate that was a consent bill that basically took away taxing awards for winning Olympic events. And then in the Senate was the gas tax was added. So the issues that were brought throughout the hearing and the bills never came to fruition, but the last day, or the second last day, the gas tax was tacked on I want to say about 11.30 p.m. Thursday, May 17th. Session ended May 18th. So that's how fast things can move. Um, the next piece is I have for you that it's been inquired several times, municipal governments and members of the prevailing wage issue. In the state of Missouri, there were changes to the Missouri State Prevailing Wage Law. One thing that will affect all municipal governments, county governments, all political subdivisions is for now on, anything under $10,000, you don't have to go out for public bid. You can just work with getting a contractor and you do not have to pay prevailing wage. Uh, there is a threshold that was established of $75,000. So any project under $75,000 will not have to abide by prevailing wage. And then if prevailing, the minimum amount of hours for 20 occupational titles uh, has to be 1,000 hours. If those 1,000 hours are not submitted by a contractor to set the wage rate in a county of that craft, then there will be a generic county construction average wage, which will be 120% of the Merck, which is a, a survey done by the Department of Economic Development. But in it, it details more specifically how the new wage rate um, or the new prevailing wage legislation will change. Um, for those that are interested in keeping prevailing wage, you can look at this piece of legislation and say at least it did not get repealed. So that's what we have on that one. And then the last one, I have several highlights, but it dealt with the wireless facilities infrastructure bill. Uh, the Municipal League took the lead and then all of their lobbyists tended to follow after they were the negotiation of the lead of the implementation. So you will be hearing more from the Missouri Municipal League, but basically they will probably bring a generic farm for these carriers to come in and implement um, the infrastructure for employment of the small cells throughout the region. Um, that's all I have. There's some more detailed in the PowerPoint, but I know you have a long agenda, so I try to keep it and touch upon certain issues. Mr. Shildroth. Thank you, Madam President. 
Senator, do you see any uh, court challenge on the gas tax uh, in regards to that Olympic uh, medal that, amendment that you talked about? I, that is a very valid question of uh, the generic of those two pieces of legislation because one was kind of an income tax, one's a gas tax. So you might see from a interest group that might be against any type of taxation, that challenge is if the adding of the gas tax goes beyond the original scope and title of the bill. Thank you. Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Madam President. All right, Tim, um, I got two questions actually. On the, under the Mason one, um, they're s singling out us with the cement Mason. Is there, which could be good for us, but why didn't they put us under that category? Um, basically, currently, under the Division of Labor Standards, there's 44 occupational titles. Senator Schatz wanted one occupational title. So what was done is basically to downsize, brought in crafts that have, to be honest with you, similar um, internationals so that they come together. And then also, if you look at c Cement Mason, which shall include a plaster, if you need a 1,000 out construction hours submitted to the Division of Labor Standards, if you have two crafts there setting the wage rate, it's easier to get to a thousand with two crafts instead of one. And my other question is, um, did this include that they can't separate a phase? Yes. Okay. There's a, on your summary, there is a section which um, brings, if you look at the page five of the summary prevailing wage threshold that explicitly tells you in the summary you cannot break it up. Because I know that's one of the, um, when we were up there myself and Ms. Pagano was up there for that legislative conference that we had, that was one of the questions I brought up to Senator Schatz and he really didn't have an answer for me. Yeah, his mission was to totally repeal it. Mm -hmm. But that was good, though, that they did that. Yes. Put that in that legislation. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Yeah, Tim, on the gas tax, uh, is there specifics, Tim, in that bill that bridges, roads, sidewalks, or can, you know, uh, can they manipulate the money to something else? Um, the money that is generated will actually be for public safety. Right now, um, the Missouri Highway Patrol is funded through the gas tax as well as road and bridge construction projects. Now, the um, state lab or any other crimes that happen off the highway, they're not funded, but the highway patrol that is providing safety to the highways throughout is funded. This money is going to be uh, it is going to be presented, because that's the way the legislation is, to alleviate and free up money so this new money will go to fund the highway patrol, which eventually is about 260 to 80 million dollars, and over this period that's what this tax will raise. So then it'll free up that money that is currently funding the highway patrol to be used for highways, roads, and bridges. But under our Constitution, any type of money that goes to gas tax has to be used for roads, bridges, or public safety on those roads or bridges. Okay, thanks. Mr. Egan. Thank you. Senator, in August there's an election and one of the uh, propositions, Prop A, if that would be defeated, could they come back at us again next year? Yes, they could. Okay, thank you. The proposition, Councilman, you're talking about is it's a referendum and it's basically to act as a veto of the governor's signature. So it was a state law that was passed, signed by the governor. This referendum's gonna say, if it gets defeated, no governor, we vetoed it by voting, voting it down. 
uh, so they can come back. There was talk and there was an attempt to put a constitutional amendment on that issue on the November ballot. Um, your state senator uh, was in the forefront of making sure that that did not happen. Mr. Caputo. Will our new governor sign it, the right to work, if it passes again through the um, House and the Senate? Uh, the, I can't dictate what a uh, future governor will do, but he is a senator. He was a state senator from Polk County, and he supported it as a state senator. Uh, I will say one thing. I've served with him. He is a gentleman. and. Uh, he was always very professional um, to serve with. On a trivia point, do you know what you call the town that's in the center of uh, Polk County? One side of Polk County is Bolivar, the other side is Buffalo. There's a town halfway between the both of them. Do you know what that town is called? Halfway. <laughs> <laughs> That's the May. end of the presentation. No, I didn't speak on that one. I just want to publicly thank uh, Senator Gina Wallace for her leadership in uh, getting that transportation uh, mm -hmm. funding passed so the voters can make a decision on this. Thank you. Mr. Jones. You know what, I, uh, I don't do this too often, but uh, uh, I'd like to... Uh, say you did a tremendous job too, uh, Mayor, uh, uh, putting this out there to the public. Uh, you've pushed this in every way you can possible and uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of people appreciate this, uh, you stepping up like you have. Uh, uh, I, I don't think uh, that this would have went forward probably if you wasn't out there uh, uh, tooting your horn about it, so uh, well, thank you very much. Mr. Shildra. I want to concur with Mr. Jones in my tenure on the council. The mayor and I have disagreed a few times, but um, on um, infrastructure issues, I think we've agreed 100%, and I uh, commend him and Ms. Mrs. Uh, Walsh for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I thank you very much. Okay. And please keep an eye on Representative Cross for me. <laughs> thank you. Have a nice evening. The next item on the agenda is hearing from citizens. This is a time to speak to the council on any issue not necessarily on the agenda this evening for three minutes. Please remember that it's not a question and answer time, but if there is something you'd like to speak to us about, we'd be happy to speak with you after the meeting. And there's no, after all that, there's no one. <laughs> I'll be darned. That's okay. The next item on the agenda is communications, which there are none. And we'll move on to public hearings. We have public hearing number 1805018. In accordance with section 405, 310 of the Florence and Zoning Code, a public hearing will be held by the City Council of Florence at Missouri in the Council Chambers at 955 Rue St. Francois on Tuesday, May 29, 2018 at 7.30 p.m. on the following proposition. To authorize a special use permit to SNA Barbecue Fish and Deli, LLC, DBA, SNA, Barbecue, Fish, and Deli to allow for the operation of a restaurant for the property located at 1149 North Highway 67 in the B3 Zoning District. If citizens will have an opportunity to be heard. Anyone with special needs to contact the city clerk at least five days before said public hearing by calling 839 or 2DD 839 Thank you. Is the petitioner present? You want to come up and tell us about this? Take it out if you can. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Good evening. Um, Hello. Hi. How are you? Okay. Yes, my name is Christopher Emanuel. This is Mr. Jimmy Brown and his daughter April Harris. We we're planning to open a SNA barbecue and fish and jelly. Basically, a, trying to put a different barbecue restaurant in a different location, other than what's already down there, which is I think is Bandanas. And just recently, we found out 
we know the competition that's trying to open up next to Steak and Shake. But we plan to do something a little different. And we don't plan on serving any alcohol, family friendly restaurant, and we do have late hours of takeout, but not dining. Other than that, where we at? That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Got a lot of questions up here. Wait just a minute. Oh, hey. Okay, okay. you ready? Mm -hmm. No. Miss <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Hankey. Yes, good evening. Uh, Mr. Brown, I spoke with you on the phone earlier this week. Uh, this, this restaurant will be located in Rollo Plaza up there, and most of you all know where Rollo Plaza is. I hope it'll be a wonderful addition. I had a little conversation with Mr. Brown, and we had, were discussing barbecue, <laughs> and we talked to the Lowe's and Home Depot. We just had their, you know, they have barbecue on sale this time of year, and he just about convinced me to sell my, to give him my barbecue, I mean my charcoal, because this barbecue is going to be so good, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Well, hopefully, uh, you, you answered one of the questions, no alcohol, which is, I think is a big thing there. I like the family-friendly part there. And I think it would be a good addition to that plaza, get a, little, get a little more business in there. I think you guys saw. So hopefully, you answer some of the other questions, but welcome. Mr. Parson. Thank you, Madam President. How are you guys doing this evening? All right. All right. I'm doing fine. Um, I mean, you already mentioned about the other barbecue restaurant that's uh, near Steak and Shake, uh, and I think you just mentioned yours is yours is going to be focused more on just takeout. Is that what you were saying, or do you have dining no, also? No, we have dining and takeout. Dining and and takeout. We were just focusing on our takeout hours a little later than you, most restaurants are. Okay, what do you I consider? I think we were like two, two or three o'clock in the morning, uh, trying to catch the after hour. Okay, so Crowd, you'll be selling so. barbecue at 2 in the morning? Yeah, but that is just only on a Friday, Saturday. Yeah, weekends only. Okay, okay. I understand, I understand. Um, um, I don't think I have any other questions. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Siam. Thank you, Madam President. I was just going to ask if you guys had any other barbecue restaurants, uh, either here in Florissant or in the St. Louis area in general? No. no. Okay. Thank you. That's first all. time going at it. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> huh? Did you get a sample, Mr. Hankey? That's all. Did you get a sample? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Egan. Thank you. These are in inside smokers you're going to be using. Yes, we're still working on that, and we still want to make sure they're inspected properly and up to code for the location. Right, and I, I believe just for your information, I think the St. Louis County Restaurant oh, Health Department has to approve those just so we get in front of them as soon as you can, because as I remember in the past, it takes a while. Uh, what days of the week are you going to be open? Every day? Yes. Yes, sir. And you'll just stay open late on uh, Fridays and Saturday nights? Fridays and Saturday only. Okay. okay, final question, what makes yours different? Uh, because it's not just barbecue, it's also going to be fried fish, seafood, and deli. yeah, good. deli sandwiches of your choice you're picking. All right, very good. Good luck. Welcome uh, to Florida. Uh, 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 a menu? A menu? Mm -hmm. yeah, I have put one for each one in, uh, into the package. Oh, you didn't have a menu? I don't think I saw a menu. I didn't see a menu, but I could have overlooked it. We'll have to make sure they get one. He's looking. So, Mr. Caputa. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Yes, uh, Mr. Regan asked the same question I was going to ask. So, okay. thank, thank you and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Yeah, I, I usually go over with every uh, business mm -hmm. that moves in that we are uh, very particular about our trash. We have big problems at our shopping centers with nobody using the waste baskets. Mm -hmm. So can you guys make sure that we uh, definitely have a waste basket at the entrance or exits uh, on the inside or outside or both uh, so everybody uses them? Uh, uh, because like I said, it creates a problem in our parking lots mm -hmm. and everything else. Well, we, we plan on coming in with half staff and hiring half staff in the community. 
So we'll have that under wraps. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you. Mr. Shildroth. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Brown, I just want to tell you welcome to Florissant, and I think it'll be good for that plaza. You guys are going to do pretty well there. Well, good. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Get ready, you all. You are going to be getting some good old bottles. There you go. Thank and, you. And some good fish. Some good fish, too. Good. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Before we close this public hearing, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Seeing none, Councilman Hankey moves to close this public hearing, seconded by Mr. Parson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carrying. The public hearing is now closed. Thank you. Thank you. You, got, you'll, you need to come back to the next meeting. Okay. We have public hearing number 18-05019. In accordance with section 405, 310 of the Florissant Zoning Code, a public hearing will be held by the City Council of Florissant, Missouri in the Council Chambers at 955 Rue St. Francois on Tuesday, May 29, 2018 at 7.30 p.m. on the following proposition. To authorize a special use permit to Bountiful Blessings North, LLC, DBA, Bountiful Blessings North, North to allow for adult daycare in a B1 zoning district for the property located at 13210 New Halls Ferry Road. Citizens will have an opportunity to be heard. Anyone with special needs should contact the city clerk at least five days before said public hearing by calling 839-7630 or TDD 839-5142. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Vernita Lewis, and I'm the owner of Bountiful Blessings North, soon to be. Um, we're seeking to open an adult daycare we specialize in working with adults 18 to 35 with developmental and intellectual disabilities. Um, so we're seeking to get a special use permit to be allowed to open it up in the Marietta Plaza on New Halls Ferry at 1310, I mean 13210 New Halls Ferry. I'm prepared for any questions because I can ramble all day about it. <laughs> Mr. Caputo. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, you have Bountiful Blessings North. Do you have one south? We have a current Bountiful, just Bountiful Blessings adult daycare in Hazelwood right now. Okay. So this will be north with the intentions of opening up more throughout St. Louis County and city. Now, the clients chance. that you're targeting to come in, now would this be any kind of a medical no, we are a Problems social, just we're a social program. Social, okay. Yeah, so we don't have a nurse on staff. We don't pass medications. So we don't store any medications like that. And we just work with 35 as our age cutoff. So 18 through 35 is who we work with. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Parson. Thank you, Madam President. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. Um, on your location in Hazelwood, is it the same age group, 18 to 35 there yes. also? Yes. Okay. How long have you guys been in business We've there been in, in business three years. Three years. Yes. Okay. Um, how, what do you predict or what, what do you think is going to be the maximum amount of uh, adult individuals that will be at Bound for Blessings North? The maximum amount, we'll probably have anywhere between four and eight because this is a smaller location and based on the square footage. We could get approved probably for about 12, but because of the um, population we work with and the space layout, it'll probably be more feasible to just keep it smaller. Right now, we have 16, but we're in a larger location. So. Okay. And what are your hours going to be at the new location? We're Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. Okay. All right. And how many employees? We'll have up to four employees, up so we try to maintain a one to four <laughs> ratio with people who come and help alleviate four breaks, so okay. up to four, including myself. All right, all right. Now, uh, I'm assuming you're going to have activities for, the, for the, the people that will be there. Are these going to be like all indoor, or are they going to be outdoor, or what, what happens during well, the Well, we go, because of the age of clients we work with, our program is mainly focused on helping them reach a higher level of functioning. So we go a lot into the community and do different things to help them gain different skills. So 
we're probably gone weather permitting um, 50 to 60 percent of the day and the other day like if we're in there they may be working on math or reading skills or how to fill out job applications things like that okay okay all right that's all i have thank you okay mr siam thank you madam president my question's actually been asked and answered thank you thank you mr reagan yes yeah, so when your clients come in how how long do they anticipate to stay at the facility each time they visit um they're there from if they get i have a couple who get dropped off but generally we provide transportation so if they get dropped off they can be there from eight to five like i have one in particular that's there from eight to five and then generally transportation in the evening to go home starts between 2 30 and 3 and they usually arrive to the center by 9 a.m so probably between 9 and 3 is the meet of the day there you go. um is there a specific time that they're at the facility meaning uh, is it a are they there permanently or do they is there a window of like two or three weeks or a period of time that they that their program runs um they they can be there forever okay. so there's no period of time okay yeah do uh, your uh, what about food situation from them? are there meals being prepared there are the meals being served there we serve meals we do not prepare so a caterer will bring in um, their breakfast and lunch or they can bring it in but we don't have a kitchen facility so the caterer just brings it in and we just serve it very good and the staff is, is the staff certified or are there they're not certified but everybody passes background and has experience um, those kind of things so. okay so the, there's not like a degree program they're certified as a daycare specialist or a teacher or anything? no you don't have to be certified as anything okay you All just right. have to pass Missouri's um, family safety care registry no certain felonies and have a year of at least one year of experience working with um, vulnerable populations the uh, um the interaction between the clients and the, and the community are there any ever issues at the one you have in hayeswood where there's any problems with the clients interacting poorly with the neighborhood or anything like that um no there are no problems and actually i'm sorry at the one we have in hayeswood we're in a residential community uh -huh. so we have had no problems um working with because for one we keep enough staff we do for the one even though the state just requires eight to one so we do for the one because we work with developmental and uh, mostly because they're young they can follow directions and things like that and plus we're training them how to be in the community so we've had success with that okay very good thank you very much you're welcome mr jones my answer is uh my question has been answered thanks thank you mr harris Oh, hold on. There you go. Thank you. Uh, so if the, if the participant takes medication, uh, the facility won't dispense the medication, but uh, how will the participant take their medication? They'll be expected to do that independently then? Well, no. They, we don't allow medication. So if they take medication, it has to be at home or they won't qualify for our program. Okay. And I thought I read in here before uh, about that you wouldn't have people who used wheelchairs no they have to be ambulatory okay if their condition changed then and they're in the program then would that mean that they would if we could no longer meet their needs then we have to um well we don't have to but i usually try to find them a better place mm -hmm. that can meet their needs are there are there some places that you have in mind that, that you're familiar with that you could refer them to yes okay there um i've been i'm a um I've worked with the state, with Department of Health and Senior Services for 10 years, so I'm familiar with the programs that are licensed and the ones that are, you mm -hmm. know, that I could recommend or wouldn't recommend. So I try to keep that open because I do get calls for a lot of older, because typically when you think of adult daycare, you think of older clients, yeah. so I have to send a lot of people other places. Sure. So. I'm, I'm familiar with uh, one of the programs, Community Integration, uh, through another agency. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have this in my head how it works, but so. If a, if a client or a participant has uh, a four to one support level, is that always gonna be adequate? Well, community integration, they're a day program, not an adult daycare. Okay, so it's a little different. So, right, so we are an adult daycare. We're funded through Medicaid, so they have a just eight to one ratio. I see. Day programs usually work with your more severe participants and it's usually one to one or two to one kind of gotcha. issue. Okay. Yeah. And uh, 
CPR, first aid certified, all that? All of our employees have first aid CPR. They do the hepatitis A screenings, tuberculosis. Those are required by the state, so. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, you were talking about transportation. Do you supply yes. your own transportation? Yes, we have one van, and we um, provide transportation. They are free to drop off um, and pick up. Right now, we have one client who drops off, who gets dropped off and picked up, and everybody else we provide transportation for. Now, are these handicap accessible, or? No, it's just like a 15 passenger van. Um, all of our clients, it's part of our policies that they have to be ambulatory because our, like for instance, now we're on the second floor in a location. Okay. So we have to write, the state makes us write whatever our requirements are into the policy. So just because you're in an adult daycare doesn't mean you can take everybody mm -hmm. or all. So we're not a medical place, so we couldn't take people with trachs or high medical needs or Alzheimer's, you know, things like that. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Before we close, oh, sorry, Mr. Parson. <laughs> sorry, I, I just have one additional question. Okay. Are, are the uh, are the are your patients? Are they going to be supervised the whole time, or are they allowed to 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 leave on their own sometimes, or what? what no, they're never them? allowed to. We work to give you a picture of who we work with. We work with um, mostly new graduates of high school, so. Most of our populations of around between 21 and 23, and they have severe like uh, autism. Most, a lot of them are nonverbal, so no one is allowed to leave ever or be unintended ever by themselves. Okay, all right. Ever. <laughs> ever. ever. Thank you. <laughs> Very clear. Before we close this public hearing, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Seeing none. <clears throat> Councilman Sayan moves to close this public hearing, seconded by Mr. Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried, and this public hearing is now closed. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We move on to public hearing number 1805020. In accordance with section 405, 310 of the Florissant Zoning Code, a public hearing will be held by the City Council of Florissant, Missouri, in the Council Chambers at 955 Rue St. Francois on Tuesday, May 29, 2018, at 7.30 p.m. on the following proposition. To authorize a special use to permit to One Dish Wonders, LLC, DBA One Dish Wonders, to allow for the ca a catering business and a B3 zoning district for the property located at 115 Flower Valley Shopping Center. Citizens will have an opportunity to be heard. Anyone with special needs should contact the city clerk at least five days before pu said public hearing by calling in 397-630 or TDD 3951-42. Is the petitioner present? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Annie Magney, and this is my husband, Will Magney. Magney. And we are seeking a special use permit to open our catering business, One Dish Wonders, in the Florissant Valley Shopping Center. Um, I'm asking for this because I see that there's only two full-service catering companies in Florissant, Krause Catering and Catering to You. Um, our business will be a non-alcoholic business, and it will not be dining. It would only be pickup, delivery, and full event catering. Um, our hours I'm looking at are 10 to 8, Tuesday through Sunday, closed on Mondays. Um, I currently have been in business for three years, and I have been operating out of commercial kitchens, but it is time for me to move on and get my own business, I'm sorry, my own location to work out of, because my business is growing. Um, I do corporate events, private parties, uh, weddings, uh, school functions, special functions for the schools, uh, anniversaries, bereavement functions, and any other place that people want food but don't want to make it themselves. That's pretty much what our business is about. Okay. Mr. Sam. Thank you, Madam President. I was just going to ask, do you have any other um, locations of this business already open? No, I don't. No, we don't. Okay. Thank you. So what is your specialty? I actually started with the name One Dish Wonders because I, I started doing casseroles and it just kind of morphed into 
everything. You know, the more I, I did, people would ask, can you add a meat, can you add a salad, can you add a dessert, can you bring a drink, non-alcoholic. Um, so it just kind of grew. So I provide everything. I provided you all a copy of my website. So that's pretty much what we, what we do. We serve whatever your needs are. Mr. Parson. Thank you, Madam President. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. I, I just wanted to know um, about your proclamation and, and maybe a little bit of background on how you received the proclamation from the city of St. Louis. Oh, okay. okay. I attended Grace Hill Women's Business Center. It is a, a nonprofit and it's located down in the city on the north and, and the south city. There are different locations and they offer a 16 week um, entrepreneur class and I took that course. I worked for AT&T for 30 years in human resources and I retired in 2012. So I'm kind of reinventing myself in a whole different area. Mm -hmm. And I took the 16 week course and that award is called uh, Images of Grace. And every year they select three participants that have excelled in their business and their business has grown. And um, so I received that award in March, and along with that award came the proclamation from Mayor Lida Cruz in, in the city. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Jones. And will you be cooking everything on site that you sell? Yes, I will. Okay. And your menu looks uh, pretty thorough and uh, it's kind of making me hungry. Thing. <laughs> if I must say so, all my food is good. <laughs> <laughs> like I said earlier to some of the other businesses, we do uh, we are very particular about our trash. We have a problem with that, so uh, please uh, keep up to date with your uh, waste baskets uh, by the entrance or exits. Uh, welcome to our city, and I hope you're very successful, man. Thank you. Thank you. Before we close this public hearing, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Hearing none. Councilman Cyan moves to close this public hearing, second by Mr. Parson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This public hearing is now closed. Thank you so much and good Thank luck you. to you. Thank you. We we'll move on now to old business. We have bills for a second reading. We have <coughs> bill number 9385. Councilman Siam moves for a second reading. Seconded by Mr. Hankey. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance authorizing a special use permit to Little Steps Preschool and Learning Center for LLC DBA Little Steps, Little Steps Preschool and Learning Center to allow for the operation of a preschool and learning center for the property located at 2154 North Waterford Drive. Councilman Siam moves for a third reading. Seconded by Mr. Egan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance authorizing a special use permit to Little Steps Preschool and Learning Center for LLC DBA Little Steps Preschool and Learning Center to allow for the operation of a preschool and learning center for the property located at 2154 North Waterford Drive. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Hearing none, clerk, please pull the council for the final vote. Siam? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Bill number 9385 passes and becomes ordinance number 8413. Bill number 9387. Ordinance amending the 2018 budget by adding a full-time and a part-time assistant court clerk for the municipal court office. You didn't let me move for a second. Oh, I'm we'll sorry. Did I just jump right in there? <laughs> you right I in did there, just but that's jump okay. right in there. I'm sorry. I will move for the second lunches. reading. <laughs> the second by Mr. Shildroth. All in favor? I oppose. Now, do you want to no, do it I can again? Do it. Okay, we'll do it again. Okay. Ordinance amending the 2018 budget by adding a full time and a part time assistant court clerk for the municipal court office. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all right. I will move for a third <laughs> reading. <laughs> Seconded by Mr. Hankey. All in favor? I oppose. Ordinance amending the 2018 budget by adding the full-time and a part-time assistant court clerk for the municipal court office. Thank you. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Hearing none, clerk, please pull the council for the final vote. Siam? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. 
Childreth? Yes. Hanke? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Bill number 9387 passes and becomes ordinance number 8414. <coughs> the next <coughs> item on the agenda is new business. The first item under new business is board appointments. Mayor. Thank you. I'd like to uh, appoint uh, Jason Ebersall from Ward 9 to the Emergency Management Commission. Councilman Siam moves to approve the mayor's appointment, seconded by myself. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. The appointment is made. Is that it? The next item under new business is request, of which there are none, and we will move on to first readings. We have bill number 9388. First readings. I, I, you, you hesitated. Did I write that wrong? <laughs> Ordinance to authorize a special use permit to SNA Barbecue Fish and Deli LLC, DBA SNA Barbecue Fish and Deli, to allow for the operation of a restaurant for the property located, located at 1149 North Highway 67. Bill number 9389. Ordinance to authorize a special use permit to Bountiful Blessings North, LLC, DBA, and Bountiful Blessings North to allow for an adult daycare located at 13210 New Halls Ferry Road. Bill number 9390. Ordinance to authorize a special use permit to One Dish Wonders, LLC, DBA, One Dish Wonders to allow for, the, for a catering business located at 115 Flower Valley Shopping Center. Bill number 9391. Ordinance amending the 2018 budget by removing a full-time position and adding a part-time community development specialist for the ho Housing and Community Development Office. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is council announcements. Mr. Egan. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to take a moment and express my gratitude to all the people who served in the United States military over the years. Yesterday was Memorial Day to remember not only those who gave their ultimate sacrifice, but those who served. Members of this council, including Mr. Caputa, the mayor, and Mr. Parsons, thank you all very, very much. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Hankey? <clears throat> yes, thank you, Madam President. Uh, real brief or quickly, it's that time of year with the lawns going crazy. I know we're getting calls, a lot of us as council people, we're getting people calling us about neighbors or, or problem properties. Uh, <clears throat> I appreciate everybody keep, keep a good look at your own lawn. Uh, it's that time of year, it gets out of hand real quick. And call them in, let us know if you got these, but have a little patience too, because I know our departments are, are going crazy with all the problem lawns that we're having right now. So get them in so we know where they're at, we know what we're doing, but have a little patience in getting them done. And first place to look is at your own. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Shildra. Thank you, Madam President. I also would like to thank all our veterans for their service, and especially Mr. Computer, Mr. Parson, and the, Mr. Mayor. I would also like to congratulate Show Me Barbecue. It's located at 300 St. Ferdinand for being recognized in the recent edition of the Riverfront Times under a story called Eight Great St. Louis Pork Steaks You Should Eat This Summer. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, you should try it. It's in beautiful Ward 5. The 25th, 25 years, wow, Friends of Betty Shildroth Golf Tournament at July 14th at the Rail in Springfield, Illinois. The Rail is a longtime home of a LPGA Tour event, and we are going back there this year. We played there several years ago. We wanted to do something different for 25 years. This event has raised over $150,000 for the hospice program at Mercy Hospital. Whole sponsorships are $100, and if you're interested, give me a call. My number is 314-839-2927. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jones? Yes, I'd like to thank uh, Robert, uh, Jeff, and the mayor for their service. I'd also like to touch base on team like I always do. Uh, they're always needing volunteers down there. There's always somebody hungry morning, noon, or night. Some extra canned goods, some extra change, a couple extra bucks if you could please run it down there. Uh, there's also been a couple change orders down on Shackleford. They're not completely done with that project yet. Uh, that has to go through the county first uh, to see what they're going to do with it. 
Uh, there is a problem on Lindsay Lane crossing Shackleford where everybody's car is bottoming out. Well, that has been handed into the city. There is also some water gardens in the neighborhood uh, there on about four streets. Uh, we are also looking into them. I know that's a, a big new thing on the streets and they are kind of deep right now, but we are uh, looking into those issues. Thanks. Mr. Harris. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow evening. The Old Town Partners is having the, the Wednesday night out with the theme street party, proud to be an American. And so looking forward to being there with the family. Uh, and uh, also Empower North County is gonna have a table there, uh, which is an organization that I've been involved with. And uh, what we, we need some volunteers uh, to help serve kids lunches this summer at some of the summer school sites. Uh, so if, if you want to stop by there, or if you want to go to empowernoco.org, um, there's uh, opportunities to volunteer to help feed some of these kids this summer. And also there's meals at the St. Louis County Library and I think maybe another location. So there's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, and uh, thanks to St. Louis Area Food Bank for doing that and for Hayeswood School District as well uh, for partnering with us on that. Um, and uh, there's also soccer camps coming up. I know. Uh, Florissant has a lot of programming, great recreation program programming, um, and also there's some some other programs through Empower with soccer. So I'm looking forward to seeing some some real uh, higher level of of competition uh, going on, and, and there's a lot of athletes signing up for that. So that's exciting. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Madam President, um, Mr. Egan. Mr. Shoulder, and Mr. Jones, thank you. You're welcome. You know, it, it's glad that, um, that people appreciate veterans anymore. I know when myself, mayor, when we were in the service, they hated us. You know, they they, they used to spit on you. I mean, it, it's it's very good nowadays that we have um, got away from that. I know a lot of the Vietnam attitude that's where it all came from i know they did not do that from world war ii and korea it was only to vietnam and afterwards so it, it does feel good now that the um, country finally appreciates our veterans um so like i say every every council meeting if you're a firearm owner make sure you secure your firearms do not leave them in your vehicle do not leave them unsecured um, we've had a couple um, firearms stolen this past week in the city, but they were secured in the homes. So, I mean, it, just, it happens no matter what you do with them, but make sure, be conscious of um, securing your firearms. If you're a firearm owner, be a responsible firearm owner. Um, neighborhood Watch Program, make sure if you're not a member of your Neighborhood Watch, make sure you call your, um, your ward, your councilman, and um, they will get a hold of you. Or, um, steer you in the right direction to get a hold of the um, ward captain, become a Neighborhood Watch um, member. It's a very good program we have in this city, and it is a very effective. That's all I have. Oh, one more thing. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I, I, it slipped my mind. Um, Amarin has a program on your phone. It's um, one of the apps. Go to Amarin Mobile. And what it is is... Um, if you have a power outage, it would tell you where it actually is, and it is updated every six minutes on that app. And um, it's a lot better than trying to call them because you don't really get a good answer from them. And, but this is a very good program that Amron has. It's a very good app. Go to Amron Mobile and um, Amron Outage. So um, it's a very good good app to have on um, on your phone. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we were proud to host the Major K Squad at our uh, Florissant Golf Club on Friday. Uh, we had a record turnout. There was uh, split tee times uh, both morning and the afternoon were sold out, and uh, sure they raised uh, a great deal of money for a very very worthy cause, the Major K Squad. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Colonel Walter Kaiser, who's uh, not only a Vietnam veteran, but he's also a Korean War veteran. 
And uh, Colonel Kaiser organized our Memorial Day uh, remembrance yesterday. And for the first time, we had it at the new Korean War uh, Memorial in St. Ferdinand Park. Uh, I was uh, glad to see uh, a Marine, uh, Jeff Caputa, and also uh, Tim Jones and uh, Keith Shildroth were there. I appreciate you guys uh, attending. A lot of citizens were there, a lot of veterans. If you'll look at that Korean War monument, you'll notice, unlike most uh, commemorative uh, monuments for different wars, there's no end date because, as you know, in the news, we're still involved in Korea. So it's, what, how many years counting now? From 1950 till now, uh, we have had a uh, presence in Korea. Then tomorrow night, uh, we're going to honor a special American. Uh, it's a, uh, the theme of the event has already been mentioned, Wednesday night out, proud to be an American, uh, hosted by the VFW. And as part of our uh, proceedings, we're going to dedicate another uh, walk through history plaque. This time it's not gonna be before the event, it's gonna be during the event at 7.45 so that we can have taps at 8.19, which is sunset tomorrow. And we're gonna honor Michael Blassie. And uh, Michael Blassie was a uh, uh, pilot, an Army Air, he was an Air Force pilot who uh, who flew 138 missions, and on his 138th missions, he, mission, he was shot down in Vietnam. His remains were eventually randomly chosen uh, to be interred at Arlington National Cemetery at the very solemn uh, site of the Tomb of the Unknowns. And he was there for a couple of decades. He, his, his remains were identified by DNA science to be that of fluorescent native Michael Blassie, and he re was returned home for a funeral at St. Dismas. Very unique uh, uh, situation in the history of humankind for unknowns have been honored for centuries for different conflicts in a very honored, very solemn way to remember all those who sacrificed, and he's the probably the last unknown because DNA science makes it impossible almost to have an unknown now. And uh, so we want to honor Michael Blassie, and by honoring Michael, we'll be honoring all those who've ever served our nation. Uh, his, he'll have his brother uh, will, be, will be there. I got a call today. I, I did want to share that I, I got a call from uh, his sister, uh, Colonel Blassie who's gonna be retiring after over 30 years in the Air Force on July 1st. And she wanted to thank us for, for organizing this ceremony. We'll have a flag retirement ceremony uh, on Saturday, June 9th. Uh, that's always well attended. And we have uh, most of the council members attend that and uh, a lot of veterans and citizens. Uh, that's gonna be at 11 o'clock here at City Hall front lawn. And uh, we will, uh, retire a flag, symbolic of what we do with all flags. We have a box here at City Hall that you can deposit a flag that's frayed and it will be uh, disposed of properly. And uh, our first food truck night will be um, on June 15th down at the Knights Grounds. And uh, Florissant uh, Police Department will host a series of two hour safety and defense seminars for for residents, uh, June 18th and 19th and 20th. And if you'll get a hold of the uh, police department, you get more information. And last, I just want to announce we have a special uh, swim night for teens at uh, Bangard Pool. The first one will be on June 8th. Thanks. Thank you. The next regular meeting for the City Council will be on Monday, June 11th, 2018. Pardon me. I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> Mr. Shildroth moves to adjourn. Seconded by Mr. Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for attending. Aye.